Hi, this is a part 2 of SAP PO approval using SAP App Driver. And in this video, we are going to fix our logging. Up until now, we were using a fixed constant uh, token to authenticate ourselves with backend system. In this video, we'll use an actual user ID and a password to get ourselves authenticated through app. Now, before we move to that, I'm going to share my switch my screen. So in SAP, there are two different ways we can authenticate ourselves with the backend. One is basic auth and the other is OAuth. And you can read in detail on SAP documentation. In basic auth, all we have to do is send this authorization with basic and a um, base64 encoded username password in HTTP request header and then system will authenticate uh, uh, the user. Now, once we authenticate ourselves, we need a CSRF token. Usually CSRF token is not required when we uh, send a GET request, but we need it whenever we send a POST request. Now to get the CSRF token, we have to send a, uh, another uh, another HTTP header a parameter for XCSRF token with the fetch argument and then it will fetch the token. Now to, to perform these two things, uh, we cannot rely directly on a, a data option here because we don't have ability to uh, parse the response header and that's why we need HTTP request flow function. Uh, we will use HTTP flow function to send a request uh, along with our uh, authentication token and a CSRF fetch uh, 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 property and then the re response will parse, will get the CSRF token and will store it in app variable. So let's get started. Uh, let me go back to the login page. So before we start with the authentication logic, first uh, we'll create two variables to hold our authentication token and the CSRF token. So I will call this as uh, auth token type text is good, save. We'll add another variable. Uh, this one we'll call xcsrf token and save. Now we'll uh, switch back to view. Our login uh, uh, functionality or the authentication functionality, we are going to integrate on a login button. So select login, go down here to the logic pane. This is what we had. It came from the uh, template. So we'll detach the input here. And since we don't have a, a base64 encode uh, in the app driver, or at least I did not find, we will build one. For that purpose, we need JavaScript uh, flow function. So drag that and then connect the tap input to javascript function this javascript function or the javascript flow function is uh, uh, pretty straightforward it will have inputs and output so in an input we have to map what input we are going to pass in our case uh, we will be using the um, uh, credentials uh, variable uh, page variable credentials so username and a password is under credentials so we'll just use credentials as an input and the output is a result. Now to save uh, time, I have already written the uh, code here. So we'll use that. I'll just replace this. This is a basic code. This is a base64 object and uh, the input username and a password we are concatenating using uh, separating uh, with the column, which is what we need as per the documentation. And then we are calling the base64 encode method to encode in a base64 and then we are retaining result. One thing we, we don't have here is uh, if we go back here to see the format, uh, authorization would be part of a key and a value should have a, a starting, the value should start with basic followed by the encoded string. So let's add basic here, prefix space, and then put them together and update so now our uh, flow function is ready now let's take output from this flow function and store it in the app variable for that purpose we'll go up scroll up and uh, get the set variable set app variable flow function and then connect this input now on this side, uh, you can see by default is selecting auth token. That is what we want. But the assign value is coming from our uh, JavaScript function here. I'm going to name this as basic authentication. 
low function for better uh, readability so we have this basic authentication now the input we are going to assign uh, from the output of basic authentication so we'll go there we'll say output value from another node so the another node is a basic authentication so we'll select that we'll select basic authentication and we'll select the result and save so the output of this basic authentication will be stored is will be stored in auth token and we'll use this auth token to authenticate ourselves so the first part is done now we have to introduce http request where we are going to send the authentication token request along with the csrf uh, a fetch request so for that purpose i will um, okay so, so this http request is not available in a core uh, you have to go in a marketplace and uh, install from market uh, you have to install yourself from marketplace so you can click here uh, this will open the marketplace you type http here and then you can install this i already did it so you can see it here then we'll dr drag the http request flow function here we'll connect the output from our setup variable to the http request now the http request has three output first one uh, gets triggered if everything is fine uh, second is uh, second gets triggered when there is a uh, error code between 400 to 500 and third gets triggered when there is an error so for example if there's no internet then it will raise the it will trigger the third output for our authentication purpose we just need the first one so we'll take the first and then we'll set um, csrf token in the app variable before doing that we need to uh, uh, update the properties of this http request starting with the url again i have url here this url is the service url or data service url without any entity just the service part of it uh, the method get is fine now the since we are making a call to the backend system we have to have the authentication string in the header otherwise request will fail and it will not give us a csrf token a csrf token is only uh, is only issued once user gets authenticated so let's add those two things here first we will add our authentication for that uh, let me see what is the word is this authorization or authentication authorization so let's copy that oh, it was here though add a value our header should be authorization and value is coming from the app variable auth token say and the second is uh, fetch csrf so that's the x csrf token i I think I also copied it here. So our header should have XCSRF token and uh, value is fetch. Copy. Fetch and save. So the request part of uh, our HTTP request is uh, complete. Now we have to take this output and pass the output. Uh, the response HTTP and uh, store the CSR, CSRF token. We will go back to core again and we'll use the set app variable because uh, CSRF token is another variable. And then we'll connect the first output. Here we are going to select our variable name as XCSRF token now. And the assigned value will go to formula. Under formula, we have an option called output from another node from HTTP request node and we'll select the uh, uh, response header. Now response header will have a lot of uh, properties, not just one. To have to get the single property, I already wrote that part too here. So we are saying map XCSRF token. So this is going to just take one specific property from HTTP request header save and a save and we don't need this and once we have a successful uh, HTTP request we will dismiss our uh, initial view so this will fall back to the uh, second uh, page which is our PO list page and save so our basic flow is ready the login flow is ready let's try so let me switch uh, my page is here so let me go 
enter my credentials these are uh, SAP backend credentials and login okay so it works okay so our authentication work but I it is not still clear for me how system actually uh, uh, is passing the authorization for the PO, uh, PO list and a detail page because we use our authentication only on a login page we did not do anything on PO detail or PO list but there is a way every time whenever you make a call to the back and you can pass your authentication token so let's uh, see it on a PO list now in a PO list if you go to variables and data variables and select your source you will notice there is authorization variable this is the variable we are sending it in http header and this is visible here is because if you go to data PO source here we have set it as a dynamic if you set it static you will not see that authorization uh, variable on the page so we'll go back to our page select authorization and we will pass our auth token variable here uh, we'll do the same thing for PO details Select that, select authorization, data variables, app variables, auth token, and save. And save. And now we'll try one more time. Oh, it's a developer user. Developer and then uh, password. and login okay so it works so we don't have any issues in next video we'll connect our approve and a reject button with the backend